Teach your talk and sports, what it does, what it do, how we live. And feeling a little bit better, been under the weather the past few days. But let's get into this NBA. Uh, the Golden State Warriors did beat the Cleveland Cavaliers last night, 120 to 114. Pretty surprising since the Warriors are now just 6 and 18 on the road. The Cavs were without Donovan Mitchell. But let's look at the Warriors starting lineup Jonathan Kuminga. Kevon Looney, Dante DiVincenzo, Ty Jerome, Jordan Poole. Uh, not exactly the players that Cavaliers fans probably expected to see when they bought tickets for this game. I'm sure this game was one of the highest resale values due to, you know, Steph Curry and the Warriors being defending NBA champs. If we take a look at their injury report going into the game, I uh, mentioned Steph Curry out, left hip tightness. Draymond Green out, right great toe soreness. Andre Iguodala out, right hip soreness. <clears throat> Excuse me, Clay Thompson out, right Achilles tendon injury management. Andrew Wiggins out, left, for so left foot soreness. James Wiseman out, left ankle sprain. So uh, this was their second of a back-to-back. -back. They lost to the Celtics the night before. Um, all Curry, Green. Thompson and Wiggins played that game. Four starters who did not play in the Cavs game. Well, Steve Kerr had some thoughts on it um, after the game. Uh, let's take a listen. A difficult decision to, you know, I guess rest those guys considering uh, the loss last night in your record. Uh, the, we never factor in um, the record um when we determine whether a guy's going to play or not uh, that would be unfair to the player It'd be unfair to us if we just said hey we lost we better play that guy even though he's hurt um can't operate that way so um you know i know it's a big topic around the league um we have so much more data so much more awareness of players uh, vulnerability um it's it's proven that you know, if guys banged up Back-to-backs, uh, players are much more um, likely to get injured and uh, miss more games. And so that's why you're seeing league-wide, um, everybody is, is being cautious when a guy's banged up and you're, you're just playing the long game. And, uh, you know, we turn around and go home and play 5 o'clock on, on Sunday without even a day of practice. Um, that's a, it's a hell of a thing, especially considering you know what these guys have been through so um, we're gonna we're gonna play it safe all year long as long as guys are you know banged up and and you know vulnerable to injury steve i cede to everybody's wishes and just say all right we'll just play everybody and then the guy's knocked out for the playoffs but you know what the story is and well, why the hell weren't you smarter during the regular season so this is just you know it's all part of it and we have to navigate it um i feel terrible for for fans who buy tickets who are expecting to see someone play um, and they don't get to see that person play. It's, it's a brutal part of the business. Um, that's why I'm going to continue to advocate for 72 game seasons. I'll stop it there. So that last part he mentions, it's why I'm going to continue to advocate for 72 game seasons. Of course, the NBA regular season is currently 82 games. What are your thoughts on Steve Kerr's opinion of this? Of course, load management has been a huge topic. Now, I know not everyone is Michael Jordan, but Steve Kerr saw plenty of Michael Jordan um, as a member of the Bulls or when he was playing against them with the Cavs. We see a lot of times Michael Jordan played all 82 games. Actually, he did it nine times in his 15 seasons, including his final season uh, when he was just about 40 years old. And in many of those seasons, he was going through long postseason runs. Uh, of course, six NBA titles. Um, I'll say it that maybe the most unlikely record to be broken is AC Green's consecutive games record. I believe it's something like 1,192 consecutive games played without one missed. Uh, you know, that's <laughs> more than... 12 seasons worth of games played, actually more than 13, um, consecutive seasons played without a game missed. I just cannot foresee that happening. What are your thoughts, though? Do you think load management is really becoming a problem? Look at a team like the Clippers, where it seems super rare to see both Kawhi and Paul George on the court at the same time. Uh, NBA has done some things to... Try to uh, make it where they don't need to load management as much. There's less back-to-backs. Try to limit the traveling a little more. But 
Uh, we still see it happening frequently in the NBA. Do you think a 72-game season would change things much? To be honest, I don't think taking 10 games off the regular season would stop teams from uh, doing load management. Um, so, you know, unless they're, that 72 games comes over a much longer time frame where there's a lot more days off. But, you know, I still see load management happening, even with the shortening of a regular season. But it is an interesting topic and one that will be talked about for quite some time. What are your thoughts? Do you think the NBA should try to shorten their regular season by 10 games, as Steve Kerr says. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe. Like the video, share the video, hit the bell for notifications. I'm out.